Welcome back friends. In this video tutorial, we'll be talking about phylogenetic trees. Now phylogenetic trees, I know that you have a fair understanding, a kind of basic understanding of it. Now I'm going to talk about a little uh, important sections of phylogenetic trees. Now actually phylogenetic trees are uh, a process for showing the relatedness or genetic relatedness between species, right? And the evolutionary relation relationship between species to draw. It's a kind of diagram which give us the idea of evolutionary relationship between different species emerging in different time durations, okay, through the history. Now, for phylogenetic trees, uh, we construct phylogenetic trees theoretically. Actually, theoretically, we can construct the phylogenetic tree of all the living organisms that we are seeing nowadays and all the dead, or actually, living organisms that we see nowadays. But actually, it was not, it is not done yet in that way what we do we try to predict we try to see that what are the organisms that are more closely related through the evolution what are the organisms that are least closely related with the evolution to understand that we construct these phylogenetic trees and phylogenetic trees can be divided into two different parts it can be rooted it can be unrooted so let's begin with that it can be divided into two parts it is unrooted and another is rooted right now unrooted phylogenetic tree means in that case nobody knows what is the common ancestor of that organism because normally we construct phylogenetic tree to 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 show that whether uh, the what is the emergence of different species right emergence so if we're talking about emergence it should be a point so emerging thing means obviously so if we measuring emergence it always means that we are looking from a point things are coming out like that right so it should be a point which is common for both of it right so if we look at these two other species so they should have a common point and this point is called a common ancestor now for unrooted trees there is no such no common ancestor no common ancestor found now for rooted type there is common ancestor common ancestor found right so the common ancestor should be like this so if I write it here this is the common ancestor and these are the two different species right now in unrooted type we don't know what is the common ancestor so usually the tree will look something like this so more more like a radial more radial like structure but no such such kind of thing you can't say that is this is the point of common ancestor this one of this one you can't say it really this is let's say a let's say b and c three different species now for rooted one we can tell the common ancestor but in this case what happens something like this something like this right let's say this things like this and we can say this as a common ancestor right so we can add the common ancestor here which is this one okay so these are the difference between unrooted and rooted type of phylogenetic trees now phylogenetic tree if we look at it so actually remember I've told you that we always measure the relationship the evolutionary relationship and the emergence of new species from a particular point. Now in this case what we can study actually phylogenetic tree is constructed in two different things one is called as actually my drawing is not correct in this case in that way because always whatever we draw here we draw it in 90 degrees so it will be this it will be again 90 degrees so it will be like that okay so usually there are two different types of point present in either rooted or unrooted type most of the time in rooted type one is called the terminal po point terminal point let's say this one a b let's mark it a b c d e terminal point and all of these points a b c d e they are the terminal they are present at the terminal region so they are termed as the terminal point here okay 
and another point is there that is called the inter internal point internal points are this point this point these are called this is another internal point these are called the internal points which are which are uh, which are from where there is a divergence so in e each internal point we can see divergence right so internal points are the points from where divergence are occurring and terminal points are present at the termin terminal region of the phylogenetic diagram okay so in this case of rooted bonds we simply know that from this common ancestor it goes through there and one branching is there so from this internal point one branching and again from this one another branching and by looking at this phylogenetic trees what we can tell now two things when are coming from a point that means these two things are having a common ancestor so species d and e are having a common ancestor which is this internal point let's say internal one right in this way b and c are having also a common ancestor internal two and we can also tell that yes as d and e are having a common ancestor so d and e are more related with each other because all of them are sharing an ancestor a common ancestor so d and e the genetic element of d and e are sharing the gene of this i1 species similarly b and c species are sharing the genetic element of i2 species right but b and d are not having common ancestor in that sense because remember if we take both of it down to the ground we can find a common ancestor here for b and d right but they are less closely related they are distantly related right d and e are very closely related b and d are distantly related by looking at the phylogenetic tree we can easily say that so rooted phylogenetic trees are good if we construct a rooted phylogenetic tree and to construct a rooted phylogenetic tree we need to know physiological features morphological features genetic features of each of those organism that we want to construct with and most importantly the genetic feature is what we need to emphasize emphasize on right but for the unrooted trees it's kind of difficult now once you have you have very less idea about the species you can't really construct an evolutionary diagram properly and then you get this kind of destructive radial like structure right without any kind of rooting you don't know which is the ancestor here in this this case so for this type of tree what we can say actually softwares are available nowadays to construct this phylogenetic trees bioinformatics is involved to construct the bio phylogenetic trees you can find my bio bioinformatics tutorials how to find this phylogenetic tree from an unknown protein structure from from knowing a protein structure and from knowing uh, dna structure so all of these things are predictions so how they make the prediction now in all this case to predict a rooted tree from an unrooted tree the only way to do that is using a concept called out groups right so let me write that which is called out groups out group they want to find this out group out group means uh, among this suppose in this picture we are having three different points so three different species out group means among these three different species we we choose one species particularly which is having evolutionary advantage which is which is going through evolution a little bit faster a little bit earlier than other two right so select any of the point and and assume that that point is having the evolution independently in earlier times than the rest of the two points and we think that is as out group so let's assume that c in this case as a out group if we consider c as a out group how we draw things we put you before and the assumption is that out group type of species is evolving faster and it evolves earlier so this this out group type of species definitely come earlier during the evolution that is the concept you always need to have so if if we if let's say in this case uh, let me first uh, just rotate it in this way so simply i can i can write it this way because this is way so this is the c remember i just rotate i just rotate that so c and if i rotate it it should be b here it should be a here right so just just rotate it in this opposite anti clockwise direction so if we find this as a out group remember the c as a out group so if i imagine 
if we imagine then from here branching occurs because it obviously developed earlier during the evolution so if we take this point and drag it down what it will look like after dragging it will look like this from this branching it will look like this so this should be C come obviously earlier in evolution right then these two things A and B so what we can look at it by telling here that C obviously comes earlier and then A and B now A and B shares a common ancestor here so A and B are more closely related than A and C right now second time if we choose A as a outgroup the outcome will be different right so if we choose A as our outgroup in this case and draw this accordingly simply small rotation of A and if we rotate A this there will be B and C and if we take a point and drag it down what it will look like it will look like this it will look like this one common ancestor this so A and B C will be there right so here it is telling that a comes earlier then b and c are sharing a common ancestor so b and c are more closely related than a and b or a and c so you can see all of these diagrams are giving us different types of relationship pattern now among this relationship actually we don't know which one is correct we are simply predicting things right so by constructing many different uh, possible ways of rooted trees from this unrooted tree we feed the data onto a software program and they are using algorithm the software program analyzes them along with the different exp experimental data that we have for these different species right so normally here we are talking about three species constructing phylogenetic tree with three species are easier but actually constructing a phylogenesis uh, more than 10 species is actually required and recommended using bi bioinformatics softwares and what we do here more than 10 uh, organism and relationship between more than 10 organism is very difficult for a human being to manually concentrate on and creating on so for that reason we need to use softwares algorithms to finally construct the phylogenetic tree for us and obviously they construct the phylogenetic trees they give some uh, give some remarks they give some points depending upon the values that they use to create that, those phylogenetic trees and that is called the bootstrap analysis that will give us a value that what percentage uh, of your software is having confidence by constructing those phylogenetic trees and finally above uh, by looking at all of them finally uh, the software selects a particular type then it's our choice to select for that particular phylogenetic tree for that those species so that's how phylogenetic trees are constructed from unrooted to rooted one now construction of rooted one obviously goes from the unrooted thing so more information we have about those species it becomes more easier for us to construct the phylogenetic tree right so that's kind of it guys and thank you